If you are working on a big project where you're modeling error reinforcements for different slabs over and over and over again, or if you're just interested in finding a new way to model error reinforcement in Revit, then this video is for you. So we are going to look at, firstly, how we can create error reinforcement with Dynamo. Secondly, how we can add hooks to our error reinforcement that we created. Then we look at how we can set our error reinforcement unobscured and solid in our view so that it looks nice. And the last thing is um, we're going to apply our Dynamo script to multiple slabs so we can see and how we can leverage um, Dynamo to our large projects. So let's get started. All right, so what I already prepared for this tutorial is that I open up a new project in Revit 2021 and I modeled a concrete slab, uh, which looks like this. I'm gonna change this representation mode to wireframe so we can see all the rebars which we model better. And now we're gonna start with the automating process. So we're using Dynamo for that. So you find the plugin Dynamo under the manage tab and then here in the right corner there is this dynamo plugin and if we click on this button it sometimes takes a little a few seconds to open up as you can see here now but it's not too bad actually and what i do i just have the um, dynamo screen a dynamo window here right next to rabbit um, now we're going to create a script from scratch. So we just select on new and now we get this beautiful interface. The only thing we need, the only additional thing we need is actually a um, structural design package. And um, I'm just going to show you how you can install it if you haven't. And you find it under the package tab here on the top and then search for a package. Now this takes a while because it's connecting to the internet. Um, until it's opening up, we can explain the first thing. Okay, I'm gonna get back to that later. Um, it's still syncing and now you can see here a list of packages. And now we just look for the structural design package. Sign package and then you click on install latest version or if you have problems with the latest version then click on this icon uh, sorry here and then you can install a, yeah an older version okay so once the package is installed we should see structural design package here on the left and if you click here on this arrow and then you should see some subfolders and basically we can now start to automate our slab reinforcement process and in order to do so we just click on the subfolder rebar then again on this arrow and then we want to create something so in this case we want to create an area reinforcement and so we click on this one again and then create base on host now when you click on this this node opens up and you see that we have a lot of inputs here that we need to fill out. And that's what we're going to do now together. So our first input is host element. And when you just hover over this input, then you can see what kind of um, variable it is. And it's an element. So um, in this case, we are looking to select a Revit element select model element we click on this now we select here select our slab and then we can connect the element and the host element now before we continue uh, I want to change automatic to manual so that it doesn't run all the time um, the next input is a major direction so page yeah page is basically in which direction um, the area reinforcement is going to 
So um, what we're creating now, we just hover over it and see, okay, we need a vector. So we are first of all select an edge again of our um, slab. And now the second input is we need to transfer this curve into a vector. So I'm going to use line direction um, to, to just do so. Major direction and then we can see, okay, we haven't run it yet. But if we run, we can see uh, that we got the vector now. And everything looks smooth. Okay, I'm gonna put that somewhere else. Now layout rule. And if you hover over it, you can see it says toggle to set layout rule. True is maximum spacing, false is fixed number. In our case, we want fixed, um, we want fix maximum spacing, but we can change that later on. Um, to keep it simple, I'm looking for a Boolean, which has exactly those inputs. Uh, and here you can also change it all the time. Now top major bar type. So we're looking for a rebar type that is loaded into the project. And to do so, we're looking for a rebar bar type, which is also from the structural design package. And again, here we can select one of those rebars. Um, doesn't matter which type we're selected for now, just want to get it run. Um, and then top major spacing, here we can just double click in the use interface and then give it a value like 200 millimeters of, of the spacing. Um, and then top major lines and here we have a default value of 4 that's fine for now so we can just run and see what is happening and you can see that now the top rebar set has been created pretty nice right all right <clears throat> so we can basically do the same with the other ones um, just to, to speed up the process and the video, I'm just gonna take the same inputs as we had before. So I'm gonna go and say bar type top minor bar type is the same. Um, bottom minor bar type is the same. And then also bottom major bar type is the same. Uh, layout rule, okay, it's always the same and then the spacing is um, top minor spacing same bottom major spacing the same and bottom minor spacing the same and we click on run and now we see how quickly our error reinforcement was created now if you have a look at it we have basically the same as we did in the last video if you haven't seen it check it out um, we have the structural error reinforcement, but we also have those um, the structural rebars, the sets, which we cannot do or modify because it's working in a set. So all the four different layers um, are basically this rebar system. And here you can change all those inputs. Um, for example, as we saw in my last video, um, that we can change the, the major hook type and we did that, but now I want to go one step further and do that in Dynamo. So let's have a look how we can do that. So we need to modify this error reinforcement node that we have created. Um, and so let's see what we can do to create hooks. Now we go on the create again, error reinforcement again, and then um, set hooks. Now this node appears and now we have some inputs again. So now I'm just taking this error reinforcement because this is basically this error reinforcement. You can see the ID and it's saying it's an area reinforcement. And now 
we need basically hook type as an input and orientation of the hook. And we can find those either by just searching for it, orientation, or like, sorry, I didn't say it, but orientation, here it shows up, Reba hook orientation. Or you can also find it structural design, Reba properties, and then um, Reba hook orientation. And then the second input is the Reba hook type. And those are both ones that are loaded into the project. So for now, we're going for standard 90 degrees. Um, and we're just going for this one. Uh, hook type and hook orientation. Let's go for right and let's run and see what is happening. All right, so now you can see that we got hooks. Of course, they're not perfectly within the element, but um, that is something we have to change. Um, yeah, project specific, and I just want to show how it's working with Dynamo in uh, this tutorial. All right, so now we created hooks. There is one or two more things that we can can automatically do um, here in Dynamo that is very annoying to do all the time in, in Revit. And when we just go closer to it here, we can see, and if we also change it to a real realistic mode. We can see that the rebus are first of all hidden in the element, so we don't see them. And they are also like, you know, lines, like they're not solids. And what you usually do, you just go here and then you can, under the area reinforcement, and then you view visibility states and then you can change to view obscures or view as solid. But you can also do that in Dynamo. And that's what we're gonna look at now. So when we go under create and then we have those options here, set solid in view and set unobscured in view. So this is two inputs that we want. So we have our reba. I hope it's gonna work for the area reinforcement. Then we need a view and a boolean that is telling us if we want it solid or if we don't want it solid. Let's look for a boolean. And we say true. And also for unobscured. And then we look for a view. And then we select, um, I think it's 3D. Oops, let's have a look. Yes. And let's check it out. It's not working because um, yes, it is error reinforcement. So I'm gonna have another look. Create an error reinforcement. And then, sorry, exactly, because we have here, we need to use those set solid in view and set on obscure in view. Basically, it's the same nodes, just like it's working for different elements. The, those ones are working for uh, the structure rebars and those for the type error reinforcement. But we can set, just take those inputs and use them here. And let's run it again. And now you can see that we created that one. And that looks very beautiful, does it? <laughs> So now we have it um, visible within the element, so it's not hidden um, in the concrete. And we also can see that it's solid now and a very nice representation mode. Of course, we can change the presentation mode 
uh, too shaded for example but it still stays um, visible and solid now if you want to change this again of course we can use the script and just say false run it and then it's back again at the first um, view mode and here we can change it all the time and now the last point that I want to show is that we can really optimize this so if we have multiple slabs which I'm going to model now um, I gotta go into a 2D view level 1 for example so level 2 not sure where I created this slab here and if I create a few other slabs then we can see how we can leverage uh, our dynamo script now again or I'm just gonna copy and paste this one all right now we have three slabs and I'm going to open up the Dynamo script again. Now I'm saying select model element. Okay, now that we have three, we can use another node um, elements, and then we can select <coughs> multiple Revit elements. And that's basically it. So model elements. And now let's run it. And now we can see that we got exactly the same as we did for the other one. And also the nice thing is that the view, the unobscured view and also the set solid view applied already to it. So there you can see and there you can see how you can leverage those dynamo scripts, how quickly you can adapt it to new shapes and new slabs.